Welcome to a worship celebrating the baptism of Jesus. Let us pray. God, you have called us to be one, to live in unity and harmony, and yet we are divided, race from race, faith from faith, rich from poor, old from young, neighbor from neighbor. O Lord, by whose cross all enmity is brought to an end, break down the walls that separate us, tear down the fences of indifference and hatred, Forgive us the sins that divide us. Free us from pride and self-seeking. Overcome our prejudices and fears. Give us courage to open ourselves to others. By the power of the Holy Spirit, make us one. Amen. The scripture today comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 through 22. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, 
Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, He proclaimed the good news to the people, but Herod the ruler, who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them all by shutting up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here ends our reading. Water. It is the stuff of life. Humans are composed of at least 50% water. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. We use water to clean ourselves and to clean the spaces that surround us. The water we use is precious. Much of the Earth's water supply is unavailable to us for easy use in cleaning and drinking. Water is also used in baptism. It symbolizes spiritual cleansing and rebirth. For us, baptism symbolizes the washing away of sins, and a rebirth. This was why John the Baptist baptized people, so that they could cleanse themselves of their sinful past and get a new start. Jesus, in our understanding, is without sin. While John the Baptist may not have had our understanding of Jesus, In some versions of the story, John resists baptizing Jesus because he sees himself as the spiritual lesser of Jesus, but Jesus insists upon it. In the story in the Gospel according to Luke, it does not record the actual exchanges that happen between John and Jesus, just what happens before and after Jesus is baptized. So far, the sermon you have heard is a sermon I've been planning to preach for a while. But something I learned from my seminary professor who served a time as our chaplain was this quote from theologian Karl Barth. He said, take your Bible and take your newspaper and read both, but interpret newspapers from your Bible. This is something that our chaplain, Deidre, felt strongly about. Once, she even replaced the decorative pyramids hanging from the pulpit with a newspaper when she preached about this approach to scripture. These were some of the headlines in U.S. papers this month. So much for 2021 being a better year than 2020. So far, not so much. And yet, in spite of the scary headlines and the divisiveness about the headlines that I'm seeing on social media, I read a gospel of hope. I embrace a faith grounded in hope. I like this quote from spiritual writer Anne Lamont. She says that hope begins in the dark, the stubborn hope that if you just show up, and try to do the right thing, the dawn will come. You wait and watch and work. You don't give up. Because of everything that's happened in this year that's barely started, 
My week old New Year's resolution to pray more is seeming even wiser than it did when I made it last week. If you have not made such a resolution yourself, remember, it's never too late to pray more. Here is one handy guide you can use to remember to pray for everything that you want to pray for. Confession, petition, intercession, thanksgiving, and praise. Here is another set of suggestions for daily prayers, also from Scripture. Pray for love. Pray for others. Pray for guidance. Pray for peace. Pray for forgiveness. Pray for protection. And pray for faith. Going back to Bart's idea of reading the Bible and the newspaper and interpreting the news in light of Scripture, I would say the difference between what I read in the Bible is that the Bible is about right versus wrong, while newspapers tend to deal more with right versus left. As a left-handed person, I certainly take offense to an ancient and ignorant idea that left equals evil, which led to generations of left-handers being forced to write with our non-dominant hand. But when we talk about left and right in terms of the news, I think it's important to remember from a scriptural point of view This is a better way of looking at it. The left wing and the right wing belong to the same bird. Our baptism has meaning. People change their minds about what they think is right and wrong all the time. But God is always there for all of us, no matter what we think. Sometimes people say to me, How can you support those people? Or how can you criticize those people? Referring to some or other group. You know, everyone is someone else's those people. Everyone has opinions. I might be right and I might be wrong about mine. I have been right. And I have been wrong in the past. It's part of being human for all of us. Sometimes we disagree with the people we love. It's difficult and painful. The Bible teaches us to do something much more difficult and painful. It teaches us that we must love those with whom we disagree. That doesn't mean everyone gets a free pass for bad behavior. Actions have consequences, but it does mean that we are called to practice forgiveness and compassion. As someone who cut across the grounds of the U.S. Capitol on my way to work many mornings for three years, it saddens me to see the mess that was left behind during the demonstration and the insurrection that was attempted there last week. I am even more saddened by the loss of life, and I am grateful that there was not more loss of life as some intended. Beyond that, I have no easy answers about how we can heal our nation. I strongly believe that we should try, even though it might feel impossible or it might feel unfair that we are in this broken place. We did not get here overnight, or even years or decades. The brokenness has been there from the beginning, because we as humans are broken. We can't fix everything, but we can and should bring healing and hope, even when our first instinct is anger and recrimination. What part can you play in bringing about peace in a world that is crying out for it? The answers may not come to you quickly or easily, but the question is profound 
and for baptized Christians like us, it is unavoidable. John the Baptist and his followers understood baptism differently than we do. They could and did rebaptize people who felt a strong need to repent more than once. In the Christian church, baptism is a rite of initiation into our community. We only baptize people one time per lifetime. We can and do, however, practice baptismal renewal. We did it in church on the Sunday that we heard about the baptism of Jesus last year, and it was a beautiful experience. Christians are not perfect, and we are not always right, not even pastors. We are, however, baptized into Christ Jesus, and it is our ability to remember our baptism. We should remember it often, even daily. It's good to remember our baptism, to reflect upon its significance, and to give thanks to God that we have been brought into the body of Christ as full members, that we have been forgiven and cleansed, and that renewal is always available to us through our relationship with Christ. And now let us begin a time of prayer with silent prayer. God of healing, we come to you at this time asking for you to wash the waters of healing and renewal over all of us. Heal us as individuals. End the COVID pandemic. Heal our nation and our world. Remove the deep divisions within people and turn people toward your truth and your light. Amen. And now let us pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Unity, simplicity, together we are one. Unity, simplicity, together we are one.
peace go with you. God's quiet within the noise. God's hope within uncertainty. God's rest within the toil. God's presence within your soul. Peace go with you. Amen.